Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and welcome to episode 13 of our DCS F-18C Hornet Academic Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the AIM-7 Sparrow. Now, the Sparrow is a semi-active radar homing missile that has BVR capability, out to 20 miles, but also a beast in a dogfight. Let's get started. All right, so let's learn how to launch a Sparrow. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll select one by pressing forward on the weapon select switch. Now let's take a closer look at the two DDIs and the HUD. Uh, zooming into the left DDI area, we see we have Master Arm Arm and the Master Mode is set to AA. We can select the uh, desired size of the target between small, medium, and large. We have a helo option to go against helicopters, a loft option, the ability to test the seeker on the Sparrow, and if we have multiple Sparrow types loaded, we can cycle between those using the button here. But those will come on a little bit later, and we'll focus on those in a later video. So going back to the uh, wing form, we have our gun rounds loaded, our fuel tank. We have two winders on the wingtips, and we have four Sparrows loaded, indicated by the 7M. Uh, two on the fuselage and two under the wings on the outboard stations, with the right wing being the selected one. Uh, coming up to the HUD. We see we have, again, uh, four loaded, a uh, 7M for a 7 mic version, and our AIM-7 ASC circle. Coming down to the HUD, we'll take a closer look at this now. Uh, we have OPR, which means operate, and we have a four bar uh, pattern, meaning that the radar is looking ahead of us and scanning the area in four bars uh, in elevation. So it'll go four, three, two, one, and then back to four. And the number to the right of that is the current bar. But we can press the uh, push button here, we go to a six bar for a greater elevation scan, or we go to a one with a very narrow elevation, up to two, and then back to four. Uh, coming over, we have the uh, diamond here, which indicates that the TDC is assigned to this display. And right below that is a 40, and that indicates the uh, radar scale. And using the up and down arrows, we can increase it or decrease it. So we can go up to say 80 or even 160, or back to 40 and down to 20 or 10 or even five. So let's go back up to 40 though. Uh, coming down, we have our current altitude. And uh, clicking the data now, we can get rid of this annoying velocity vector and horizon line by hitting the declare button. And we'll come back out of data. And now we have our azimuth setting, uh, the uh, azimuth that we're looking at ahead of us from left to right. Uh, right now we're at 140 degrees, so it's 70 degrees left, 70 degrees right. But we can change that to say 20, um, very narrow, up to 40, up to 60 up to 80, and then finally back to 140. And as you might imagine, you know, the greater your azimuth and the greater your bar setting, the longer it's going to take to uh, scan an entire frame, and you may miss something. Whereas you get much more narrow, you're not going to see as much, but you'll get a much higher update. Uh, coming back up, we have our uh, radar mode, which is range while search. And in this format, again, we're looking at azimuth left to right and range uh, from top to bottom. And in this case, we have a, a range of 40, so the center one here would be obviously 20. Next, we have our TDC, and that's what we're going to use to lock our targets. And it looks like a, like a captain's bar with uh, two bars, vertical. And the top number is your uh, elevation uh, ceiling, 36,000 feet. And the bottom one is 13,000 feet. And as you see, as we move it up and down, it decreases and increases. So let's go ahead and lock up a target. So I want to go ahead and disengage. And I'm going to move the TDC over this target here. I'm going to press down on the TDC button and perform a single track target, STT. And now we got them locked up. And we can see it's a velocity vector right on the front. Its speed is 0.7 Mach, and its altitude is 24,600 feet. We have its ASC circle, and we have our steering dot. Now coming back up to the HUD, let's take a closer look at this now. I'm going to pause it for a second, too. So again, we have our uh, missiles on board. Uh, the 74 indicates with the uh, missile on uh, the rail how long it would take to reach out and touch that target. Uh, then we have the range to the target, uh, 25 miles about. It's a V sub C or closure, 950 knots, pretty darn fast. And just like we saw in the uh, Sidewinder, we have our TD box, which shows where the target is. 
and then uh, the dot here, that's her steering dot. And we're going to try to fly to place the steering dot in the ASC circle so we can get a good solution queue. And the uh, little arrow here, that's its uh, aspect. So right now it's flying right at us. And again, this is your ASC circle. And at the uh, point here, the diamond, that is your R arrow. And that's simply the maximum aerodynamic range of the missile, totally regardless of the target you have locked. Now, at the always at the six o'clock position, this is why it's a normalized circle, is your R max or your maximum range that you can reach that target. Uh, then here we have the R min, the minimum range, and inscribed inside is uh, the range to the target. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it now and see how this changes. Now there's another marker that we can't really see right now. It's actually on the same position as the R min, and that's your R N E or range no escape. And what that means is with the target locked, and if they were to pull a 180 degree turn, the missile could still fly out and hit it. So essentially you could still run it down. So now I'm going to go ahead and place the steering dot in the AC. And now we've got a shoot cue because the range is between R max and R min. And now what I'm waiting for is to get a little bit closer and we'll see the R and E indicator show up. And then what will happen is when we have the range between the RMN and the RNE, the shoot cue will start to blink, uh, indicating we're in the, uh, the optimal uh, shoot zone. And now we're starting to see those separate. And the lower one is the RNE. And now we're in a good solution. I'm going to pull the trigger and fire the missile. Fox 1. And below we see a TTG. That's your time to go for intercept. And splash 1. And now we lost the lock. And that's why I got the lost and the blinking cue. Now, just like we saw in the Sidewinder, we can also use the ACM modes or the air combat maneuvering modes, and it works really well for the M7 as well. So we go ahead and we'll go Castle Hat up to go ACM, it defaults to Foresight. Then we can also go uh, down for uh, Vertical Act or off to left for a Wide Act. And just like the, the Sidewinder, it's a very handy mode of uh, snapping a lock when you're in a dogfight. And the uh, Sparrow has a very large warhead, so it can do a whole lot of damage to a target. Anyhow, I very much uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, initial look at the AIM-7, and I will see you next time. Thanks.